people think about don't get comfortable as comfortable as you can get on these rocks and offer up fish to the penguins now what's going to happen here is they'll fill their plate their plate their frisbee and then they're going to give a fish to the same penguin and then to the same penguin again they're going to keep feeding that same penguin until that penguin literally just turns away it's his way of saying thanks i'm scoffed 
And then what happens? Well, they're going to find another penguin. And they'll start feeding that penguin the same way. And then what's going to Any last questions before I wrap this one up here? Okay? All right. Is this a penguin? Right. You know what it is? It's a bird. You're right. He is right. It's a bird. Uh, these two animals are not related. Puffins and penguins aren't related. They're both seabirds, but that's where they can be told. One question. One question, sure. Just like us. Oh, uh, I take it back. These guys are birds before I go too far. These are air breathers. <laughs>
Mira, eso es un caballito de mantel de la mano. Mira, así está bien como Sí, ya se movió. ¿Para Life jackets can be found throughout the ship. They can be found in lockers behind the pilot house on the upper deck and in the overhead compartment on the lower deck. Please take a moment now to locate these areas. We must also request that you remain seated for the duration of the cruise. 
This is a United States Coast Guard regulation to provide... Cruise out into Lake Michigan, you're going to get a terrific view of what architects have termed the world's greatest urban skyline. And though Chicago is now the third largest city in the United States, a series of swampy mountains with the shallow river that flowed into Lake Michigan. The Potawatomi Indians called the area of Chicago, which literally translates to snowy Indians, after the wild onions that grew in abundance in the muddy swamps. From the point of European discovery by the French explorers Marquette and Joliet in 1673, through the next 150 years, Chicago existed only as a small community of trappers and traders, and as the site of an army post, Fort Dearborn. Chicago finally began to grow in 1835 with the construction of the Illinois and Michigan Canal, which linked the Great Lakes and the Mississippi via the Illinois River. The canal transformed Chicago into a bustling port, and in 1837, with a population of 3,000, Chicago was incorporated as a city. By 18, most of whom lived in wood-framed houses that lined wood-paved streets. This fact, combined with the drought that had stricken the city since late that summer, made Chicago a tinderbox when fire erupted in the O'Leary barn on the night of October 10th. The story of Mrs. O'Leary's cow kicking over the land seems to be just that, a story. But regardless of how the wind swept fire started, when it was over, 300 people were dead, 100,000 were left homeless, and 18,000 structures had literally gone up in smoke. Despite the physical destruction, Morton remained intact. The opportunity to rebuild the city attracted the nation's finest young architects, including Daniel Vernon, John Root, and Louis Snowman's in Chicago School. Just two decades after the fire, rose the world's first fireproof iron frame skyscraper, William LeBaron Jennings' 10 story home insurance building. Chicago's rise from the ashes of the Great Fire culminated with its selection as the site of the 1892 World Fair, the Columbian Exposition. Perhaps one of the most enduring legacies of the fair was from a New York newspaper that was upset their city lost the the first row of buildings you see is mine, because of the new shopping malls located there. The greenery between Michigan Avenue and the White Park is Grand Park, named after some before.